Right, so I'm just testing for continuity and resistance across the lead. So one end of the lead is there, the other one's here. Now, if you look on the back of these, it says five kilo ohms. So when you're testing across both ends of the lead, you should be getting five kilo ohms there or thereabouts. So stick one probe in there, the other one. Yeah, see, now it's fired up. Good morning, we are, no, 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 good afternoon, I should say. It's 20 past one approximately. Uh, we are the 6th of October. And for October, I mean, check out the weather. Blue skies. And I think, what is this? 18 degrees at the moment. So it's fairly warm, very warm for October. But breakdowns are still coming because mornings and evenings are still chilly. So people have started putting their heating on. I've done a couple of jobs this morning already. The job I'm at now, I think the customer actually found me off of YouTube. It's a Worcester CDI from what I know, and it's come up with an EA fork code. I think they said they've had the electrodes change and a few other bits and pieces, so I'm not sure exactly what could be causing the problem. Might be something simple as a condense, might be something like just setting up the gas valve, but let's go in with a fresh pair of eyes. I've got the bits and bobs that I may need to give it a strip down service if I need to. But let's just go in and see what it's doing, what it's not doing, and then we'll go from there. And again, Unilite, you get 25% off everything. Just use my code UNCLE. With Rhino Trade Insurance, if you need public liability or business insurance, I've got a 10% code for that as well, UNCLE10. And then from Tool Monster Store, I've had a few people messaging me saying, do you have any discount codes for where they can get, pick up tools from? Tool Monster Store have given me a 5% off code as well. So if you get anything from there, you'll get 5% off. I'm gonna put all the links to all the affiliates that I work with in the description. So if there's anything that you fancy, you'll find it all in there. Let's go on with the video. Thank you for tuning in and don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, here we are. We've got ourselves a CDI. Now the electrodes have been replaced, but as you can see, the rectification probe has started to get a little bit worn down. Condents, I can't quite tell, but I think that probably does need cleaning up. Now, the customers, said we'll go for a full service because I said we could either change, I could clean those up, I could change the electrode seal, I could check the condensed trap, check the gas valve, make sure the combustion readings are all fine. The trouble is it's an intermittent fault, so it's not happening all the time. And one thing that they mentioned to me, it only tends to happen when they run the heating. When they run the hot water, it's not happening. To me, it could be that obviously when you run a combi boiler on hot water, it goes at full whack. So when it's going at full whack, that rectification probe is going to sense the flame because you're going to have full flame inside. When you put it on heating mode, obviously it starts off on a lower flame. So maybe that's not actually being able to sense the lower flame or maybe the burner inside is a little bit clogged up and is clearing out and not able to get the heat through. So we are going to just give it full service. I'm not going to record the full service, but I'll put a link to the video that I've done on how to do a full service on one of these. So I'm clean out the main heat exchanger in there, change the electrodes, adjust the gas valve if we need to afterwards, clean out the condensed trap, got the fan seal, got the burner seal, got all that stuff with me. So yeah, let's just get cracking. I know I said I wasn't gonna film this one, but just bring you guys in to have a look at this main heat exchanger. That was all blocked up inside. Look, I'm struggling to get the cleaning tool all the way in. These ones I've managed to clear up. Some of them I can get in far enough, but it's literally, I mean, I'm sweating because I'm literally fighting against the deposits inside here. So I'm about halfway down. Yeah, I'm about halfway down up to there. So that's going in that far. This one, yeah. There we go. So I've just got to keep cleaning all of this. Then I'll wash it down from the top. I reckon that's most likely been contributing towards the EA fault because if the heat exchanger is blocked down and the gases aren't able to get through the flueways, then 
and that makes sense on the heating mode as well because obviously like I said on heating it's going to start off on low modulation low flame so if you can't get all that through there then it's going to be thrown up at EA4 but yeah let me carry on cleaning all this up and then we'll give it another test at the end right we're just putting things back together so that's all been cleaned out new burner seal on there the old burner seal you can see it's all gone pink and battered that's so, how you know that's gone changing the bearing plate over because the old bearing plate again it is it was split anyway so that's done new bearing plates in there i've got the new fan top seal on there i am probably gonna have to open this up again and now flush all the deposits out of there with the pressure washer and then let it all go down through the condensate, and then obviously take the condensate trap and clean all that out as well but i've managed to clean it out luckily i did manage it was a battle but i managed to get it all out once it's all all done we'll do our 26 9 checks and check that everything else is all okay all right let's clean out the condensate trap as you can see it's all full of crap in there a little bit in there but majority is all in there we don't want that to get inside so i'm just going to undo that screw clear it all out now I've got the Kasha jet wash and I'm just gonna jet wash it through inside as well, make sure we've got nothing left inside. Look at that. Look at that big old chunk of condensate. That is rank. All right, let's get this all cleaned up. Boiler is all done, back up to pressure. Tested everything. Even on the gas valve, I had to make very, very small adjustments. Maximum CO2 should be 9.6 it was reading 9.3 and I know you allowed a 0.5 tolerance either side but I just tweaked it to get up to 0. Point, that 9.6 minimum is 9.0% of this it was already at 8.9 so I just gave it another little tweak got it up to 9 gas rate was spot on CO wasn't even that high afterwards so I'm pretty confident that cleaning out the main heat exchanger will have resolved this EA fault code that's been happening intermittently that's all done and let's go on to the next one Yo, 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 we are at the next one in Enfield. Ugh. It's a Wiesman that is giving an intermittent F4 fault code. <sighs> I came here, I think, about two weeks ago when the customer first called me out. And it wasn't happening when I was here. They said they'd called me, I think, on a Thursday and I would booked it in for a Monday or a Tuesday. And they said it hadn't happened all over the weekend. So I was like, well, I'm here now. What do you want me to do? They said, well, what can you do? I was like, if it's not faulting out, I can't really do anything. But I said I can give it a service, make sure the combustion readings and all that is all okay. That was all fine. Left it. And now two weeks later, I've got a call to say that it's now locking out again to F4 and this time they can't reset it. So what I was just digging for in my van was a set of electrodes. Now, a bit of a backstory on this one. I think about three years ago, I changed the electrodes, the electrode lead and the PCB because there was multiple faults on it. So I don't know if the electrodes have just burnt out again. Um, I'd be surprised given that it's only been a few years, but you never know. So let's go in, let's check it out and see what the problem is. Right, here we go. I've got a V-Spin. Let's pop it on. Like I said last time, it was playing ball absolutely fine. Let's see what it does now, right? Is it doing a preheat or something? No, it's on eco mode, so it shouldn't be. Let's run a hot tap. nothing there we can get the case off and we'll see what's going on inside right <coughs> got u gauge on the gas well so standing pressure is decent we've got about 26 millibar so let's try again and see what's going on with the gas valve opening yep the gas valve is definitely opening it's jumping from 28 
it's locked up to F4. Right, let's reset that. I think that's reset it. Is it? Yep. Okay. Right. Let's have a look at the electrodes. Yeah, electrodes seem absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with those. Gasket's fine as well. Well, I say that. Let's sometimes this. No, that's not gone loose or anything like that. That's perfectly fine on it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to check if I've got a spark coming off of this. Right, so got them off. I've turned the gas off there. I want to see if we get a spark going across those. No, it doesn't seem to be sparking. It might be a fault with the lead, or it might be a fault with the board. All right, so I'm just testing for continuity and resistance across the lead. So one end of the lead is there, the other one's here. Now, if you look on the back of these, it says five kilo ohms. So when you're testing across both ends of the lead, you should be getting five kilo ohms there or thereabouts. So stick one probe in there the other one stick it in there open line no resistance or infinite resistance that means damaged lead there's a break in the lead now I can also do the bleep test so when it's on bleep test obviously yeah if I do that on this, nothing, open line still. So we need a new ignition lead. Yeah, see, now it's fired up. I even tried a new set of electrodes just to rule it out and I was getting the same thing and then it fired up so then swapped the old electrodes back in. It's fired up but after I finished recording, I did another story from Instagram and I was getting the resistance reading. Then I wasn't, then I was, then I wasn't. So I think there's definitely a break in the cable and it's just where it is at the moment, how it is, it seems to be getting there, but definitely gonna have to come back with a new ignition lead to get this sorted once and for all.